All right, hi guys, Dane here, and welcome to another weekly reading vlog, as is like my custom. I've just finished the last one, so I have to do an introduction to the next one, otherwise I forget to do an introduction and everything goes wrong. So yeah, uh, I'm off to go and read. I've got two, oh okay, I've, yeah, I've got two new bedtime books. So one of them is, uh, is, is a Red Dwarf novel by, uh, I think it's just by, just by Rob Grant, um, as opposed to Grant and Naylor, who like created the show and wrote the first books. And it's it's just type, like tiny print, so I don't want to read it as my main book. So I've got that, and then I also have a book about Count Alucard, who is a vegetarian vampire. It's like in a series I read as a kid, so I'm, I'm looking forward to revisiting it. Okay, let's go do that. All right, we're in Tamworth. Uh, you better put your booze away, Bex, because we're entering an alcohol-restricted area. This is the moat house. Okay. Yeah, that's all right. Yeah, the moat house. A breed of pig called the Tamworth pig. Your phone died. I, I got my portable charger if okay. you've got the cable. Around here. Tamworth Castle, explore 900 years of history. Here we have the view from the castle. So over there, that is part of Ankerside Shopping Centre. Yeah. Got the castle grounds, the bandstand. That large bit of grass down at the lowest level is where they quite often have like little mini music festivals. Over there we have the snow dome, and then through there that's where the kids play park is, the skate park, all that stuff. There we have the gatehouse. The woman with her hay. Yeah. Over there we have the weir, which is where we used to <laughs> drink as kids. Here we have the ugly as fuck tower blocks, built in the 60s. But why? Why are they there? Because, because overspill. Yeah. Time to explore a castle, baby. Alright, we're at the castle. We're in the courtyard. We're going to the armory, I believe, aren't we? No, we're going to the dungeon, then the army. Yeah. In the castle. This is where you would hide if the, if the castle was under siege, such as during the English Civil War. Orders from King John in 1215. Hasten with some forces to the castle of Tamworth and taking out of it all, all prisoners, horses, arms and ammunition to pull it to the ground. They did not do a very good job of pulling it to the ground. That's, that's fortunate. And so here we have Dane Cobain in the stocks for um, indecent exposure in public. Mm. He's going to have to be here for three weeks. I my ankles. You shouldn't have done it. Mm. There were children around. Please don't throw tomatoes at me. I'm going to throw tomatoes at you. <laughs> and he's um, joined by his um, friend. Hey, Bob. And um, nearly headless Nick. Hey, nearly headless Nick. Except for he's quite headless. Yeah. <laughs> So I'm just going to leave you there now, yeah? OK, because I'm very uncomfortable. No, you have to stay there for three weeks. To the armoury. <laughs> Tis but a scratch. The film. His day in the Conqueror. <laughs> to battle! <laughs> we are in the day parlour. A little bit nine men's Morris down there. My game? Yeah. Cool. Nine men's Morris. How do I buy that? You buy it? Yeah, it's nice. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, they might have it in the gift shop. Well, here is a writing desk, so I would be at home. Uh, when is a writing? Hang on. When, when is a raven like a writing? Desk? Yeah. Is that what you're to say? Why? Why is a raven? Why is a raven like a writing desk? Do you know why? No, there's Be no answer, right? Because Poe wrote on both. Oh, really? Well, that's one of the theorised answers. <laughs> Nine men's Rebecca Morris. So we're in the dining room. Tudor dining. That's cool. So we are in the least vegan room in the household. Yeah, I'm sure they're not actual real ones. I don't know, maybe they are. Probably not. Yeah. So that cage up there was used to keep food in, to keep it off the floor from rats and stuff. Chamber. Yes. 
It served as the lady of the household's chamber with a four-poster or tester bed frame. There was somewhere for her to write her letters. A Bible box was stalled in front. Well, they probably should clean the stool up. That's going to smell. She doesn't look very happy. No. Bloody hell, because she had ten sons and six daughters. That's why she looks so miserable. Oh my God. We just had a paranormal experience with a black lady, didn't we, Bex? She slammed the door shut. She did. She actually did. <laughs> she slammed the door shut because we weren't very complimentary. I wanted to know how she had 16 kids without dying. Or we're off to the top. I don't think I've been up here, you know. In fact, I haven't. This is always... Quite high up. Yeah. <laughs> well, we're here now. We're at the top. I'm the king of the castle. It's a long way down. That church over there is St. Edith's Church. And look, you've got down here, it shows you where all the stuff is. There's the, there's the high street down there. You see the snow dome more clearly. So this is the haunted room. Spirits, if you are present, make a noise. Holy shit. It's real. It's all real. The door just opened itself this time. Oh my, oh, I caught that. That is, that is some spooky stuff, man. Ooh, to go out. That is actually pretty creepy. She's not happy with you being in the room. Yeah, let's get the fuck out of here. <laughs> cool. The ladies' of servants' oh. chamber. It's the Canterbury Tales. Shall we try and read some? Prologue. Here beginneth the book of the tales of Canterbury. I can't read that. When there April with his showers saw the drought of March hath perched to the root, oh I see, and barked away every vein in such liquor of which very engendered is the flower. Alright. Go on love, be alright. It's only heights. It's not the heights that kills you, it's hitting the ground. Pistols and a blunderbuss. We're in the south range. And I'm on low battery, so I'm going to conserve it. Oh, it's stuck in my ear. Because, what are you doing? It's stuck in my earring. Oh, no. Can you, can you take it out? There you go. I, I didn't do anything. You gonna, are you going to try it on? Yeah. One sec. I'm going like a mad woman. What do you think? Am I going to be a beautiful old lady? Yeah. With my pretty bonnet. Oh. And I am a distinguished gentleman. <laughs> it used to be uh, Lord John Ferrer's private bedroom and then became the nursery. I see some books. Very nice. Creepy ass dolls. <laughs> this is the bedchamber with an ensuite. It's all right, isn't it? I'd, I'd use it. So these used to lead to some attic rooms for the servants. You cannot see really much. Ah! Uh, this would be the oak room. A reception or meeting room. Mmm. Top hat and gloves on the table. There's your globe. Oh, look at them old books. Look it at them. Like Into the Great Hall. Oh. That is great. It's the sequel to Love Island when they sort out all of the lawsuits. She has emerged from amongst the flowers. We're off to go and see the castle grounds. <laughs> My old haunts. Just telling Bex, this is where I used to street drink. We got a lot of vinyls. <laughs> Is my mushroom pie, and then the meaty, the meat eaters, the meaties. Mm, I'm going in.
off to see a man about a woman. By which I mean, off to see a drug queen. <laughs> There's only one guy living here. It's a nice place to sit. That's me old bedroom. That's me mum's living room. Look at that. That's beautiful. It's a bear. Who are these men who march so proud, who quietly weep, eyes closed, heads bowed? These are the men who once were boys, who missed out on youth and all of its joys. I see somebody's laid a wreath. Long, the United Kingdom's longest serving police officer. Like a, a vaulting thing, innit? Yeah. yeah. But I hadn't thought of that. Yeah, right, well, until you just said it, yeah. Well, I presume that's why they've done it. Like I would that. imagine so. Yours are or mine are? No, mine are. I'm making a party now. Yeah. Okay, are you filming? Yeah. Oh, damn. <laughs> you better not have that fun. We'll see. This one unveiled by the Queen. Don't know. The first tree in the National Memorial Arboretum was planted here in the Greek chapel. himself rather than surrender. The bank opposite the Sikh memorial 
would cause the Korean War from 1950 to... On the same site is a small, round, black granite memorial surrounded by a ring of shrubs. This commemorates the 46 lives that were lost in 1949 when Chinese rebels attacked HMS Amethyst on the River Yangtze as she sailed upriver to protect the British Embassy. Next... Actual debris taken from Ground Zero formed part of the memorial. Never. The memorial bears the regiment's proud motto, Nothing is Impossible, and a list of the campaigns and battle honours won by the glider pilots. The monument is placed in an appropriate position at the start of an avenue of poplars, part of the memorial to Operation Market Garden, the airborne attack on Arnhem in September 1944. ...to the memorial at the Blue Beach Cemetery in San Carlos on the Falkland Islands, where some British casualties are buried. In front are two beds of azaleas, forming a tribute to the frigate HMS Antelope that was lost during the campaign. Just beyond this, you can see one of the original anchors from the frigate HMS Ardent, also lost in the same conflict on the 21st of May 1982. We are now on Millennium Avenue, lined with small leaved lime trees dedicated to the country's heights. The green side is principally dedicated to the Royal Air Force. The RAF ensign marks an area where two groves of silver birds... 14. Its 13 glass panels depict the different colors of the oceans of the world, and yellow and red panels represent the rising and setting sun. A single figure faces the setting sun, head bowed and cap held in the at ease position. The figure recognizes shipmates who have given their lives for their country. Also on this side, dedicated oak trees stand. The association looks after the welfare of RAF personnel, past and present. The Eagle who had undergone experimental reconstructed plastic surgery, generally after receiving burn injuries in aircraft. The colourful memorial we're now approaching is the Royal British Legion Poppy Memorial. Here, individuals can commemorate a loved one. On the shelter are the further reaches of the Arboretum, with many more memorials including the Women's Royal Naval Service, the gift of life for Maureen, where you will reach the memorial to the 1914 Christmas truce dedicated in December 2014 by His Royal Highness the Duke. After the armed forces, veterans and their families during conflict and peacetime since 1885. Next is the distinctive... The Royal Canadian Air Force, established in 1920 as successor to the short-lived Canadian Air Force, it provided strategic support to the Royal Air Force and Canadian Expedition Coldstream, Scots, Irish and Welsh Guards. Their badges and mottos are displayed on a striking monument, making use of appropriate materials to reflect the, e the largest unit in the British Army. Their names and badges, each with the universal symbol of a bugle, are carved into the memorial. Today, they are part of the single large regiment, the Rifles. It's five meter tall bronze, depicting Bellerophon mounted on Pegasus with his spear in hand. None better. And on the green side, we see the memorial stone dedicated to the parachute squadron, Royal Armoured Corps. Established as a totally independent unit on the 3rd of February 1965, the parachute squadron was deployed throughout the world before finally being disbanded on the 12th of February 1976. The memorial which bears the squadron's emblem was dedicated in June 2017. The iconic Royal Salamanca Eagle, overlaid with gold leaf and designed by sculptor Ian Rank Broadley, sits on top of the obelisk. They too gave their lives in service of their country, while the carousel horse is a universally recognizable symbol of their life. Three 
created by sculptor Vivian Mallon. The design reflects that strong comradeship. The three infantry soldiers from Ringside is a memorial dedicated in 2014 to the men and women of the Royal Army Veterinary Corps. compelling visual representation of the camaraderie and friendship between those in the forces. On the green side, the initial letter of the service, but also to stand for Asclepius, the Greek god of healing and medicine. The rod of Asclepius is now the internationally recognized symbol for emergency medical units and personnel. Still on the red side, we remember Queen Alexandra's Imperial Military Nursing Service, founded in 1902 which later became Queen Alexandra's Royal Army Nursing Corps in 1949. Its members have served in all theatres of war since its formation. At the end of the Second World War, there were 12,000... was formed. The regimental flag's colours represent their motto, from mud through blood to the green fields beyond. The ash tree was cultivated for Royal Army Ordnance Corps, Royal Pioneer Corps, Army Catering Corps, Postal and Courier Service of the Royal Engineers in 1993. After the memorial's refurbishment in 2011, the Princess Royal rededicated it on one of her frequent visits to the Arboretum. From their barracks in Chichester. The name Foxy is derived from Corporal Fox, the model for the statue. World War. All of these remembered come from a part of the former British Empire, including India and Australia. The Pavias were dedicated in 2014 at a ceremony attended by former Prime Minister David Cameron. Coming off on our red side is the site of the Polar Bear, which was the very first memorial in Scotland. Yeah, it's crazy, isn't it? No view that was. What, your phone? That's mad, isn't it? It gives thanks that the world has been free from world war. <laughs> All of the dragonflies. We are in a biodiverse part of the it's the lumber jills and the women's timber corps the women's land army Even in modern day, they're always proud that they served in the armed forces. That's the train we went on. Let me joke on camera. Leo Tolstoy must have been here because I can see war and peace. Maybe where it's thought of the idea. Maybe. Was it, it was Tolstoy, yeah, it was, wasn't it? It's the largest loss of serving personnel lives in one single incident since World War II.
deep in there, you know. Yeah, it's I good. saw. It's all right. No, I can't say I'm not hungry because I don't. I am pretty hungry, but I don't fancy soup. I had a biggish breakfast. Hey look, it's Ethelfled, Queen of Mercia. God, I'm gonna look nuts if anyone goes past. Hey Ethelfled. She's pointing towards the town centre. Uh, well, she pointed towards Domino's Pizza, she's hungry. We're back in Wickham, we've got salad with falafel pizza and uh, Ash versus Evil Dead. Yeah. I made some dessert. Very nice. So what day is it today? It's my birthday. Happy birthday! I'm, I'm 17. You're not, you're 30. Oh. <laughs> oh. It's fine, okay. being 30 is great. Well, what should I start with? Um, do you um, not start with the cards normally? I, well, sometimes. It depends, because I always think the cards tend to actually have like the higher value stuff mm. in. I'm actually really close to you, and it's quite bright with the... Um... Okay, that's fine. You can always zoom out. Oh, you probably are zoomed out. As this is from, all right, to a special grandson who is Aww. 30 today, celebrate in style. Let's see, the front, Aww, Happy there. birthday, Dane, enjoy your special day. We'll be thinking of you with love from Granny and Granddad Clark. Oh, that's very nice. Wishing you a fantastic 30th birthday, followed by more good times to come. Do I try and not get copyright strikes if I do mm. this? Oh, that's nice, look, a Costa gift card. All right. What is it? Here we go. Oh, no. oh yeah, no it is. Bullseye. 20 short stories by Yasutaka Tsutsui. Translated by Andrew Driver. That looks cool. A new collection of stories by Yasuta Yasutaka Tsutsui. Award winning author of works ranging from dark comedy and piercing satire to science fiction and surrealism. Uh, he's continually challenged the purpose of literature and the relevance of social values and is recognised today as one of the key founders of Japanese postmodern science fiction. With the sunlight behind you, you know like you keep on looking slightly holy with yeah. your Jesus look. <laughs> I, I can imagine I do. Right, oh, look who's here with us as well. Hey, Biggie. I'll go with these cards. Hey, are you going to say happy birthday to Dane? Is that no? He, he, he said it with his eyes. Yeah, I, I see there the uh, camera is on low battery as well. Yeah, it is, yeah. Oh, oh no. Charge it in a bit. What's this? For an amazing son who's 30, happy birthday. Uh... I wonder who this is from. It says, so proud of the man you have become and wishing you all the happiness you deserve today and always. Happy 30th birthday with love. And it says, to my wonderful son Dane, every day I am so proud of the lovely person you are and your achievements. Love you always, mother. Kiss, 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 kiss. That's really nice. Yes, it's very nice. To a special grandson, just for you. Oh, that's cool, isn't it? <laughs> that is basically you. Yeah, it is. Hope your day is filled with every happiness for someone who's loved like you deserves the very best. Mm. And a birthday's an occasion when each minute of the day should hold all the special things that could ever come your way. Two Dane, have a good day, lots of love from Nan and Grandad. That's Aww, a lot of kisses. That is, that is so many kisses. Mm. <laughs> is it 30, is it 30 kisses? Oh, I don't think it's 29. Oh no! <laughs> Happy 30th Dane, love mum. It's a 30 pound Amazon voucher. Oh wow. Because she knows that if she gets me an Amazon voucher, I spend it on 30 pound of books. Yeah. But I get, but like, I'll probably get like 10 books for that. That's um, great. In fact, I might even go through my list of Agatha Christie's. Mm, I only those. need like 15 more. Only 15 will. Yeah. I mean, that is quite good for how many she's written. Yeah. Well, with 30 quid, I can probably get like eight mm. of them, though. Okay, so my dad, just for you. Oh, there is what appears to be a check in here. Yeah. To Dane, have a great birthday. Good luck with your driving test. Love, Dad, Mandy. So these are oh. all from your mum, aren't they? Yeah. Hot spices collection. Ooh. Chili and onion, chili and parsley. Is that inferno garlic and chili salt? Oh, inferno garlic! Yeah, blimey. That's well. In, oh, I see. So they're pretty. They're pretty basic mixes as well. Mm. But in like, so the chili salt is ninety percent salt, ten percent chili. This is stationary. Oh. Can't go wrong with a bit of stationery, can? Oh, some notebooks. That's oh, good. That's cool, actually. Oh, nice. Handy. She sort of listened as well because I was like, if you're going to get notebooks, get moleskin notebooks. Mm. They're not moleskin, but they're moleskin clones. So mm. these ones do tend to hold together as well as moleskins. Yeah. Because otherwise, you get ones like if you've just got the hard backs, mm -hmm. the backs fall off. Whereas these, those would be, those would be nice. Oh, some... oh good. Yeah. Some Handy. Documents. These would be good for my reviews. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> she, kept, she kept her silence then yesterday. Yeah, she said, she told me as we were going around that she yeah. bought you some baking trays for them. We just said, well, you can never have too exactly, many. Exactly, yeah. Well, also, I didn't get ones like these, so I got a, I got a bigger roaster. Mm. Actually, this means I can throw away the rest of them as yeah, well. Yeah, that's good. Because I, I just basically threw away like the two worst ones. Mm. There you go, Biggie, some of you to sit in. Mm -hmm. Yeah? No, okay. He's like, carry on opening your presents, please. Yeah, he wants to see whether there's anything for him. I should imagine he's, he's probably already sniffed them and knows there's nothing catty in here. Mm -hmm. but... Well, we got loads of cheats from yesterday, didn't yeah, we? Yeah, so. that's true. Some socks. Never go wrong with socks. I did actually request some socks. And also, well. <laughs> it's like, it seems like a very birthday gift, isn't yeah. it? Those socks. It's kind of a tradition almost. Mm. I'm intrigued by this. Yeah. This is heavy as well. Maybe it's, it could be like a, a coaster, yeah, maybe. Yeah, nice coaster. It is a coaster, I believe. It's not drinking alone if the cat's home. <laughs> That's good, that right, isn't Biggie? it, Biggie? Yeah, he's like, That's bloody true. That's one of my favourites so far. <laughs> okay, so a moleskin classic as well. Oh, nice. Lovely. It's expandable in a pocket. Yeah, they're good. They're really good, they are. Yeah. Very nice. Mm. And then this. A method. Jeans. Yeah. And they are 34 waist. Oh yes, that's good. <laughs> so now ever I decreasing waist. I have jeans that fit me. Yay. Do you want my birthday presents? Okay then, yeah. Um, well, I'm holding the camera, so. The what car. do you think about the wrapping paper? It's very good. I, so I don't good. know how to unwrap it without oh, I'm spoiling it. Really careful <laughs> wrapping, so. I wonder how many I've read. I've read that one, that one. I kind of want to read that one. Well, I've read those three, four, Five, six. Uh, I don't know if I counted that one. Maybe hold it up and then everyone can see. Because I didn't get a very good shot of it. Yeah. Oh, there's little, oh, there's Mrs. Dalloway there. I read that one. I've read quite a lot of them actually. Over 50%, which kind of surprises me. And then it's got like Lolita, which I want to mm. read. Happy birthday, it's Biggie. <laughs> Look at Biggie, it's you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dane, happy 30th birthday. I can't believe my bookish bloke is 30. Welcome to some of the best years of your life. <laughs> I am two years in and things are just great. I mean, I met you, didn't I? That's very true. I hope you have a fantastic day. I have every intention, work permitting, to spend it with you. Let's have good food, lots of cuddles and a few kisses. You were worried there about what you did. <laughs> yeah, I know. Love you, Bex. <laughs> P.S. I couldn't resist this card. It looks so much like Biggie. Yeah. I did. Bless him. That is, I like that. Okay, so you want me to open this one? Yeah, first? that one first. Oh, cool! You got me, Bosch. Yeah. Is this because you want to eat? <laughs> yeah. So this is a it's big bash so. Bosch mm. by by the Bosch boys, Henry Firth and Ian Thiesby. Oh, that's cool! I didn't realise it had orange, uh, mm. green. Yeah. Whatever. You can tell I'm good with colours. Mmm. Oh, and it's a signed edition. Yeah. Oh. Oh, and it's got six bonus recipes. Oh. That's very nice. Oh, thank you. That's, that's I really may have nice. tried one of the recipes already, yeah. which was the um, banana blondies. Yeah. Oh, and the tagine, actually. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> oh, another. Oh. Could this contain the secret of what's happening next weekend? Maybe. I've been told to keep a weekend free. Oh, oh my lord. Oh, hello. Loads of, there we go. Loads of books again. Yeah. I saw June there. Actually, I actually haven't read any of these. Oh, there's Lord of the Rings to kill a mockingbird. Right, let's see what, what we got. Oh, you are amazing. Mm. These are tickets to see The Mouse Trap, Yay. which is Agatha Christie's play. It's also the longest running play in the world. Dane, happy 30th birthday. As it's such a big milestone, I wanted to make, a, uh, make it a birthday to remember. When we first met, you said you always wanted to go to see The Mouse Trap. So we're going. I've got two tickets for this Saturday. We can spend the day exploring London and the evening in the Agatha Christie murder mystery. Welcome to the 30s club. It ain't so bad. Love you, Bex. Oh, you're the best. I'm very excited about this. Yeah, well, I, can, I couldn't remember whether you'd already seen it or not. Or, cause no, I've never seen yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, no, you I've hadn't seen it, it good, yeah. Because I, I remember you saying about how you really wanted to see it. Yeah, so. I've, seen, it? I've seen one of her plays, but not The Mousetrap, which is yeah, like yeah. her most famous one. Yeah, because so. I, you know my memory's been really bad, yeah. but I was like, oh, no, I think I'm going to be yeah. easy. This is very thoughtful yeah. presence, yeah. thank you. Oh, We've got to turn the camera off. Yeah. A little haul. I'm going to see The Mousetrap. 
Yeah, that's well exciting because it's soon as well. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. I have to make sure I don't get too drunk at the art centre open mic on the Friday. Oh, yeah, <laughs> I won't know because I'm be so excited about that. So we're in Wagamama and we're gonna have vegan food for, for who's who's birthday? Your birthday? My birthday. Oh yeah, that's right. I'd forgotten. <laughs> yeah, this looks good, the vegan egg, but I'm not going for that. I'm getting I'm getting the vigatsu, this thing. And you're getting the yasai katsu curry and then we're getting some yasai gyoza and some beer obviously and there's the chili oil out of focus. <laughs> we got food, it's here. Alright. We succeeded apart from me, I didn't eat all my rice. Yeah, but we, you ate a lot. You ate more than those to me. Yeah, that's true. And I'll have it.
avoided if you take the route straight through what is known as Part 5, John Scott Brewer's group He gets intimidated by the dirty pigeons that in love a bit of it Part 5, who's that good lord marching? You should come down on your port life mate, get some exercise Hmm. Ba, 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 ba. Hey Biggie. It is uh, Wednesday and I'm back to work today. Um, a little bit hungover. So obviously yesterday was my birthday so we went for a wander around the charity shops which was nice and then we went for dinner at Wagamama and then we went to uh, an open mic and yeah I played some music with my friend Dave which was fun. Uh, I drank some whiskey and then when I got home we took Biggie for a walk, didn't we Biggie? We took you for a walk and my neighbours called the police on me and then a PCSO which is like a police community support officer as opposed to a full police officer which is weird because you'd think they'd send an actual policeman if they thought there was an active burglary but yeah he knocked on my door being like uh, you know did you see anybody trying to break into next door's house and it was me walking the cat but also also, they said someone had like been trying the door and stuff, and it's like, we didn't do that. <laughs> we just, Biggie went into the garden, didn't you? So, we've learned a lesson. We've got to be careful we're taking Biggie for walks, haven't we? Yes. Um, I don't actually have too much to report back to you on. I've been reading, I've currently got like three bedtime books on the go. So, I was reading... Um, let me just mute my computer. Yeah, I've got like three bedtime books on the go at the moment because I've got um, If You Like School, You'll Love Work by Irvin Welsh, which I've read like the first four stories in it and then I'm on the last story, but it's like pretty much novel length and it's all in Scottish dialect, whereas like some of the other ones hadn't been. Um, and it's just because it's quite time consuming to read, I guess I figured I'd read the rest of that one in bed. Uh, then I'm reading a Red Dwarf novel as well. Um, and also a Willis Hall, like, there's, he writes these books about uh, vegetarian vampires, but I'll, I'll, I'll update you on those when I actually get to the end of them. So I have three bedtime books. Uh, I have just read The Ladybird Book of Mindfulness by J.A. Hazley and J.P. Morris. This is like a pretty solid four out of five, I think. Um, Clive likes to practice loving kindness meditation. This is when someone thinks of a friend, then sends them love. Clive finds this easier than bothering to meet his friends or lending them money. Yeah, that sounds about right. So yeah, four out of five for this, like a parody kids book for adults. And uh, the other, only other thing is I'm currently reading Nightmares and Dreamscapes by Stephen King. So I did make a pretty decent dent on my travels. I'm over halfway through now. I'm on page 440 of about 830. But I am really enjoying it. There's been one or two stories that haven't been great. But actually I feel like the stories in this have been better than the ones that were in Night Shift. And that included some of the ones that were turned into movies like Children of the Corn and all that stuff. Whereas I hadn't even heard of any of the stories in this one. But like it starts out pretty well just with this guy with this elaborate plot for revenge where he's trying to basically get somebody to drive their Cadillac into like a pit trap so that he can then bury them alive. And it's kind of, you know, it's very Stephen Kingy, very bleak. But yeah, I think uh, I'm going to wrap up this vlog here because obviously all the Tamworth stuff's happened. I know there hasn't really been any uh, books to really update you on because I haven't finished any while I've been away. But um, 
which is unusual for me as well. But in my next one, I will be going to see, uh, well, Bex got us tickets to go and see The Mousetrap, which was for my birthday, and that's on Saturday, so we're going to go and see that. And then I think we might be going to a pub quiz in Oxford on the Sunday. And uh, it's the Arts Centre Open Mic, which I host here in Wickham on the Friday. So, yeah, there's all that to look forward to. So on that note, as always, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit subscribe for more. Let me know in the comments if you've ever been to Tamworth, I guess, because I haven't really talked about books, books this much in this video. And I'll see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.